The Mac Mini, this thing is absolutely incredible. Even for just a standard entry level version with the entry level specs, that M1 silicone chip is absolutely amazing. It's not only powerful, it's extremely energy efficient, and surprisingly, not once have I heard its fans kicked in. So this thing, thermals always run extremely cool and allows this machine to completely run silent. But out of the box, it still isn't perfect as it does require some additional accessories. For starters, no, it does not come with a mouse or a keyboard. So you gotta buy the two separate. And if you need additional storage, there's some awesome accessories that you could purchase that will keep things minimum and give you additional ports. And so in today's video, I'm going to go ahead and run through my favorite accessories that I'll consider them to be essential accessories for the Mac Mini. Let's get started. So my Mac Mini, as I previously mentioned, this is the entry spec model. So it means it comes standard with only 256 gigabytes. And for the average Joe, if all you're using your machine for is just online work and such, very few save files, this storage amount is perfectly fine. Just however, if you need two terabyte of internal storage, if you go on Apple's website and spec it out there, it's extremely expensive. So instead of doing this route, what I traditionally did is I bought this dock exclosure. This thing was surprisingly inexpensive for what it's capable of doing. For starters, not only does it give you two USB 3 ports in the front, as well as two additional regular USB-A ports, but if you're a videographer or a photographer, you have access to not just a simple SD card, but also a micro SD card slider right there on top. And what makes this dock station so unique and different is that you could actually install a HDD or an SSD hard drive into your machine to give your device additional storage. The storage of storage that I went with is the Samsung 2 terabyte SSD. This thing was on sale and still is currently on sale and performs extremely well, especially when it comes to transferring large size files. So this allows you to benefit from the performance of an SSD at the same time, saving you a lot of money compared to if you actually paid the two terabyte version Mac mini. This setup, in my opinion, is a must have for any content creator as you not only save a lot of money as I previously stated, but it's so user friendly and minimum that all the important ports that you need is right in front of the unit instead of having these large USB-C hubs connected to the back part of your Mac. So that's my solution in terms of adding additional storage to your Mac mini while also retaining high data transfer speeds as this simply just connects to the back part on a USB port with this small USB-C to USB-C connection cable that it comes included with. Now, additional accessories is, like I stated, there's no mouse or keyboard included with this unit, unfortunately, Apple sheeped out here, but you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on buying the official Magic Keyboard by Apple, as this keyboard by Satechi, as you notice, is a full number row keyboard. It connects via Bluetooth it's made out of the same premium quality that you expect Macs or other Apple products to be made out of. It's nice and solid. It does recharge with a USB-C port and it also has the same Apple styling like this part right here where you turn it on and off. Since it connects via Bluetooth, you can have this paired on both on three total devices at once and you can switch between them by simply holding down the number with the Bluetooth icon in front of them like right here. You could program up to three different devices. It could be a Windows or a Mac and it connects in a matter of minutes and you have all your important shortcut buttons right here on the function key row. So volume up and down, brightness, and did I forget to mention, this is backlit. And it really does get really bright. So it's really easy to type even in those low light rooms. Besides that, in my opinion, this is a much better keyboard compared to the Apple one, and is a lot more affordable and offers the same premium quality that you expect to find on an Apple product. Now, in terms of mouse, you can't go wrong with the Logitech Master Mouse, the MX. This is the previous generation, but even the newest generation functions just as well. I hear that it is made out of better materials, but the new one costs the same as this one originally was when it was first released. So if you're searching for a very good, extremely comfortable, very ergonomic wireless mouse, definitely do consider picking up the Logitech MX. But in my opinion, for the best user experience on a Mac OS product, especially with Big Sur, is the official touchpad by Apple. This magic trackpad 
is the only Apple accessory I would ever personally buy externally for a computer is because the OS is just so well optimized for this thing. It makes editing and zooming into projects by simply pinching and zoom. Basically will give you the touchscreen functionality on this trackpad. It does have an internal rechargeable battery which charges via the lightning port, but charges up extremely quick in Paris in no time on the Mac mini. I again personally like using this because I'm able to utilize Big Sur as its full potential and makes an excellent tool, especially if you're used to editing videos or content on a MacBook Pro or a MacBook with a touchpad. This is the reason why I like using this instead of the mouse because I'm more efficient using this than a traditional mouse whenever I'm working on a project. So this is just a user preference. Now the Mac mini does have an internal built-in speaker, which sounds all right. It's not the greatest sounding speaker, especially since it's so small, it's mono, it's not stereo sounding. So I highly recommend upgrading to a proper computer stereo speaker setup. The speaker setup that I personally use is this Logitech one, which is inexpensive, under $100, has a massive woofer, looks extremely modern, and has this cool rotating dial, which allows you to plug in and external headphone. It gets really loud. It's not Bose quality, but still is very doable and sounds a lot better than what the Mac mini has built in. And it doesn't cost a fortune and can easily match any PC setup. Now, if you want to overkill your Mac mini setup, you can always just pick up the HomePod minis as they're a hundred dollars each and you could pair them stereo. And honestly, this setup is a little bit more expensive, but you have the ability to pair your phone or any other Apple device and stream to it wirelessly. And these two, even by themselves, can easily sound extremely good in any room setup. So for multiple usage, you can also get this HomePod minis and have them paired stereo. This will allow your Mac mini to sound absolutely incredible and utilize all the other HomePod mini features, which I actually went ahead and covered in this video if you want, if you're curious and learn more about the HomePod mini and its unique features. But again, that is technically overkill. Now the monitor I'm using, it's nothing special. It's also very inexpensive, but offers a lot of real estate space. This is just a simple Logitech ultra wide monitor that I've been owning for quite some time now. If they're still making it, I'll be sure to link in the video description. If not, I'll link an alternative to the newer version of this monitor. But the resolution is basically this, and I love using it, especially when I'm working on a video on Final Cut. Now, the only thing missing from a Mac mini is the built-in webcam. Now you can pick up a Logitech webcam, which is perfectly fine, but if you have a GoPro laying around, you are always able to download the GoPro webcam software. And I actually went ahead and covered that as well. If you're curious how to set that up, you can go ahead and watch that video right over there. But this is the setup that I'm currently using on my Mac mini. If I ever have to do a Zoom call or a conference call of any kind, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in my GoPro and shoot at a very nice resolution, a way better resolution compared to what MacBook Pros are being equipped with. A bit overkill, but definitely does get the job done. And GoPro has a bunch of cool little software features as well, so you could crop in a little bit more if you don't wanna use the ultra wide lens. And lastly, AirPods, doesn't have to be the AirPods Pro, any form of AirPods. If I'm ever editing a video and need to do some sound correction, this is typically what I usually do, but any other Bluetooth headphones will also work. But I just like the whole app ecosystem of being able to connect them in just a matter of seconds by simply just equipping the AirPods. But besides that, those are my favorite accessories that I'm using on my Mac mini to really allow me to get the most out of this amazing desktop computer. Again, I'm really blown away at how powerful this Mac mini is. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave this video a like but not only that, get subscribed. And for those performance videos I was talking about earlier, go ahead and watch this video over here. It's like actually go ahead and test out some trending popular games on it like Fortnite, Among Us, and etc. And in this video over there, that's also another video I made comparing it against my 16 inch MacBook Pro under a regular real world situation. Feel free to watch either or. Links to everything of course will be in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching, take care. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.